Hi everybody and welcome to He Answers Prayers. This is Vanessa. So I am going to be doing a series where I want to talk about things that I have been through in my life as a child, as a person, and as a adult, and as a female. And I'm going to start all the way back over from the beginning. I think it's very important that people know when I speak where I'm speaking from, where I'm coming from, and what I've been through. And also, I think it's very important for me to speak about things that have happened to me so I can give hope and encouragement to other people who are being confronted by some of the same things that I have been confronted with in life. And also to share these experiences with people who can protect these things from happening to their children. Uh, first of all, I am the oldest of six children. Um, one of my baby sisters recently passed away, so now there are four children living and two children deceased. Both of my parents are still alive. Uh, I am not in communication with any of my family members, none of them. When I say none, I mean zero. I'm not in communication with any of my family members. That was a decision and a choice that I had to make pretty much in 2007 because I was so stressed out. I was so depressed. I had attempted to commit suicide several times in the past and I was still feeling like I didn't want to live. And I had walked away from my job. I had walked away from property that I owned and I pretty much abandoned everything because I'm sorry you guys I had pretty much abandoned everything because I no longer wanted to live I was so tired. I didn't have the desire to live even though I wasn't contemplating hurting myself. I just didn't have the desire to live anymore. And I walked away from everything. And in the midst of me doing that, I pretty much kind of ended up homeless in the sense that I walked away from a townhome that I owned that I had become behind on maintenance fees and I just feel like everything that I was doing was not working and I was just tired and people were continuing to hurt me and take advantage of me and I just was tired so I just walked away. I didn't even fight for something that belonged to me because I was tired. And I ended up in a building that had no lights, no gas, no water, no plumbing. And I stayed there. The, the landlord allowed me to stay there. It was a roof over my head, but it was no nothing. No water, no gas, no heat, no lights, no nothing. So I continued to live in this place and... I was very sad. I was very 
still not wanting to be alive. And there were time periods where I would just lay in bed and cry out to God. And one day I just was wishing and praying to God that he would just allow me to die. And it was coming up on the new year. And I was just very, 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 very sad. And something happened where God encouraged me to get up. And when I got up, I recorded this message on my phone. And I remember it was the new year was coming. And I said, Happy New Year. If you are getting this message, or if I have not contacted you to wish you a Happy New Year, then I don't want, I'm just walking away and I just need my space and I don't want to have anything to do with anyone. I can't remember the exact words that I said, but I said something to that effect. So everybody that called me for the new year, if I felt like I didn't want to talk to that person and that was one of the people that I didn't want to have anything else to do with, I sent them to voicemail. And I pretty much sent everyone to voicemail. I pretty much sent everyone to voicemail. I remember my mother calling me. I sent her to voicemail. I remember, I think for the whole week, I didn't answer my phone because it was nobody. I had decided that probably 95% of my hurt and pain was due to people who I was covering up for things that had happened to me as a child that I had been covering up that hurt and that pain my whole life. I had been suffering and crying and dying my whole life because I wasn't able to freely release and talk about the things that had happened to me as a child. And so when I thought about my mother, I thought about the secrets, the lies, I thought about the abuse and the abandonment. I thought about the feeling of never ever feeling loved never ever feeling protected and I was like you know what <laughs> I have been covering up I have been dying so that other people could live and I'm not gonna do it anymore I'm not I have to let go of these relationships that are keeping me bound to this hurt and this pain. And to pretty much make a long story short, my mother called my phone a few times. I did not answer. I did not respond. And she didn't make an attempt to ever find out what was wrong with me. She never left a message and said, if it's anything that you need to talk to me about. She just said, okay, Vanessa. She just left a message and said, okay, Vanessa. And that's it. She never said, 
you might be going through some things right now. I love you. I care for you. I miss you. If you need my help, let me know. How can I help you? She never said anything to the effect of letting me know that she would be there for me. Which lets me know all of these years she has never been there for me. So why was I protecting this person? Is what I had to ask myself. Why was I protecting this person? And the things that I was protecting this person from was killing me. Nobody cared about me dying nobody cared about me being dead nobody cared about me being alive but being dead nobody cared about me never having peace nobody cared about me crying Nobody cared about me crying my whole life. So, I finally came to the conclusion. <laughs> it's survival of the fittest. If I want to survive, I'm going to have to let all of that go. And maybe in letting that go, I will be able to find some peace for myself. And that is where the journey of He Answers Prayers started. I began, I began to post prayers on Facebook. I began to post my feelings and my emotions. Some mornings and nights the only thing that I had the only thing that I had when I started He Answers Prayers the only thing that I had was my cell phone I wasn't working because I had walked away from my job I was going to the flea market selling a few things. I was having garage sales here and there and I would just ask God for enough money to pay my cell phone every month. And that's the only thing I had was my cell phone. And it was a very, very cheap cell phone at that. I think the bill was like 40 something dollars a month. <laughs> it was one of them little flip. Uh, I don't know. It was It was a cheap, cheap, cheap version of a cell phone. And I didn't even, like I say, I didn't even have lights or anything. I would have to go places and charge the phone up. I would go to the library and charge my phone up. Uh, I had eventually got a generator where I would charge my phone up during the day. And at nighttime, I would just go to sleep. And when I couldn't sleep, I would just get on my Facebook page and I would just post a prayer or post something about how I was feeling. And people began to respond to that. And that's where He Answers Prayer started, you guys. It started from my feelings, from my emotions. And like I want to reiterate to you guys, this is not a... Uh, church I am not a pastor I am not a preacher I am an individual who believes in God I'm an individual who serves God I am an individual who has had a lot of hurt and pain throughout their life and not one single person not one single place that I turn to for help I went to church 
churches were so I can't even describe it there was no help at churches there was no assistance at churches there is not even an outreach for the amount of hurt and pain that a person has been through like myself you could sit in the pews day in and day out and they never will discover who you are and what you're going through and how you're suffering deep down inside and that's why I began to speak out about the things that I was going through because there are so many people that are sitting in the pews who want to be dead who want to take their life how can someone commit suicide from the church go to the church the church is not being delivering the church is not caring the church is not reaching deeper than the surface of the skin how could there be people who go to church day in and day out and they come home and they still wish they were dead how could that be possible So, I'm going to start over. I'm going to start my story from the beginning and tell you guys things that have happened to me. And one, this is going to be a long story and a long journey. And when we get to the end of this story, we can discover where we're going to go together from here. So, that's pretty much the beginning of an apprentices of He Answers Prayers. Um, and that's pretty much the beginning of me separating myself from my family, even so-called friends. I separated myself from every single person that I knew you guys, every single person. I eventually had contact with a few family members but at the end of the day I end up having to do the same thing to them that I did to other people I end up having contact with a few friends as well and I end up having to do the same thing with them and I just walked away I just walked away I just if you're going to allow people to continue to do the same thing to you over and over again and you have expressed to those people and those people know the amount of hurt and pain that you have been through in your life and those people play games with your peace play games with your sanity play games with your life and with your happiness then that means they don't love you and they don't care anything about you. And for me, if you don't love me and you don't care nothing about me, then I don't need to have nothing to do with you. That's just how I feel about it. I can't tell, I'm not here to tell anybody else what to do in their life, but everybody has to find a path to their peace. And for me, I couldn't take along the baggage of other people to, to in search for my peace. I couldn't. I, I already had too much on my plate. I couldn't deal with that any longer. It was killing me. So I had to let go. And if that's what I had to do, you guys, to stay alive, and this is what I suggest people, whatever you need to do to stay alive, if that means you have to break ties with people, then you do it. If that means you have to be honest with yourself, and I think a part too of me breaking ties with my family, it was a part of me being honest with myself and saying, these people never really loved you. Like, you want to think that a mother should love her children. But in fact, the fact of the matter is, 
she didn't. So you're holding on to this hope that your mother loves you when actually she doesn't. And so everything about life and regarding your mother is going to be disappointing. And you're constantly setting yourself up for disappointments day in and day out. Because you're never going to get what you think that a mother should give her children. It's not what you think you deserve. It's the, even the bare necessities that a mother should give her children. You're never even going to get that. And when I realized, hey, I'm never going to get that. I wanted it my whole life, but look at how old I am today, and I still have never gotten it. And I was like, okay, dummy, how many more years do you have to keep expecting something that you've never gotten up until this point? This woman ain't never came to realize that she needs to do better. So, are you going to go take care of yourself because nobody else is coming to your aid to help take care of you? Even when they knew that you were sad, even when they knew that you're in a state of depression, even when they knew that you were in a state of uh, suicide, who came to your aid? Nobody. So it's like I realized that I was always alone. Even when my family was around me, I was still alone. So then I pretty much said, well, why not just be alone with no expectations? Just go ahead and accept that you are alone and just be alone. And that was the beginning of this journey that we're on. And that was the beginning of God showing me and teaching me that he answers my prayers. That he sees my cries. That he sees my weeping and that he hears my weeping, my moaning, and my groaning. So I'll be back. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about what I just said, make sure you leave a comment in the comment bar below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and be sure to come back for another video. Thanks for watching. I'll be back.